Hi, a welcome to episode 37 of the New England Gal Knits podcast. It has certainly been a hot minute. It has, I don't know where the time's gone. We are living in crazy times right now. For anyone watching this in the future, it's July 15th of 2020, and we are still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. So it's it's a little bit different times a little bit crazy I still feel like it should be March when it's actually July but that's a whole nother I could go on for hours talking about that um, I do want to quickly touch base at the top of this podcast just to talk about something important make my statement tell you exactly where I stand and with that I want to say black lives matter I am listening, I am learning, I am having constant conversations now with my children, and while we've always had conversations in this household about it, I'm making sure it's happening more often because it's important. It, it needs racism, it needs to stop, it is especially bad in this country here in the United States, um, and I could go on forever on this topic. However. I'm not an expert. I am still learning. I'm learning how to be anti-racist. I am learning how to stand in the gap. And if you have not heard that phrase, please, please, please go over to the Instagram account of Gigi Made It and watch her video. It is such a great video, such a great thought process. It really helps explain exactly what we all need to be doing. So on that, I'm just going to leave it there because I could probably go on forever and I am certainly not an expert and I am learning. So we're going to cut it off there. So I'm going to kind of get into the podcast. I'm going to kind of switch things up. Um, I'll probably be renaming this podcast because I'm actually going to start talking about some quilting and oh, I don't know if you can see, I have a little smoky girl, my little cat here. So I'm in a new location. I am in our basement. I have a new sewing table. I have a little crafting corner down here now. So I apologize. The lighting's probably really bad. I'll be working on that over the next few episodes. Um, however, for now, I just want to film. I want to get this out. I've missed talking with you guys. Um, I am, if I, you feel like I'm rushing through this, I kind of am right now. It is, oh, she's shutting everywhere. Um, yeah, it's about eight o'clock right now in the morning at 830. We have people coming in to take down trees for the next few days around our yard. Ones that are hanging over wires. We have a couple hanging over the house. We just need to get taken down. So... I'm trying to get this filmed before they come and I start hearing all that noise. Although if you hear noise now, like there's a herd of elephants upstairs, it's not elephants, it's just a 14 year old boy who keeps running up and down the hall every time he scores a goal on his video game. So apologize, but that's life right now. We are all stuck in our house. Um, all of us except for my husband, he's still traveling in and out of work. I'm working from home now, but um, we're all kind of stuck here in this house working <laughs> together. So with that said, I'm going to kind of do a couple different segments. So I have knitting. Um, I also have some quilting because I started quilting again and I'll talk about that later on. And then for those of you who do not know, I did back in February open up my shop. Um, it's called Woolen Lights, and I'm selling hand dyed yarn, candles, and there's the cat behind me, and some bags as well. So I'll share a couple things um, with you that I have a shop update for bags coming on Friday, so I'll share that as well with you. But let me jump right in and get into some finished objects as far as knitting goes. So I have been knitting away on socks lately. That seems to be all I want to knit. Um, 
K from the Crazy Sock Lady is hosting this summer, the Summer Sock Camp. Um, she has tutorials and patterns and there's a knit along and it's so cute. I actually, I have my coffee mug here, but she's got this cute little logo here um, for it. It is a lot of fun. I'm following the hashtag on Instagram. Um, so if you haven't seen it, go ahead check it out like I said it's super fun and all I've been wanting to do is sock knitting so I have two finished socks that I have knit relatively fast so the first one here is this is the still water sock by a summer Lee and this is knit in um, fiber arts in the jellyfish colorway and then I can't remember, this was the mini that came with the sock set. So, and this was fun. It is a, let's see, I'm going to show here, mock cable with a textured pattern up the front. And it is, was so much fun. And I don't know if with the mock cable is what made it fly by, but you were just like one more repeat, one more repeat. Um, in all oh, this yarn, it is, um, I had treated myself, so this is their MCN, their Merino Cashmere Base, and I, oh, it's so soft, I love it. So, that's my first finished pair of socks, and then my second one is, um, these are the morning coffee socks, and this is a pattern by Kay, the crazy sock lady, it is a free pattern. I did knit this out of my Coradale nylon at 75.25 um, Coradale nylon base. And this is Antique Mauve Tonal Colorway. And here it is. And I just finished this up this morning. And this literally has been my morning coffee socks. Every morning I get myself a cup of coffee first thing before work and I sit there and I knit on the socks while watching a podcast. I've been doing a lot of podcast watching because you know what there's no, not much else we can do right now so I have been doing a lot of podcast um, watching so I've been doing that in the morning and I love the way these came out so I will definitely have warm feet this winter so that is it for the finished objects I did finish a couple um, summer sweaters since um, the qu quarantine I don't know if we want to call it quarantine or stay at home um, orders were in effect and I'll probably share those over the next few episodes um I'll probably wear them and share them but right now I'm wearing a t-shirt it is hot it is sticky it is muggy hence why my hair is back I washed my hair this morning and it was um I think I blew dry it for 20 minutes and I just gave up so it's still kind of damp but that's off track in a story for another time. So I'm going to start with works in progress and the first one I'm working on I'm keeping I made this little bucket bag um, and I love the Monstera Leaf patterns lately I just anything Monstera Leaf I am all over. So I am working on the rock pool sweater and this is a pattern by um, Lily Kate France and here are some pictures hopefully I'm working with a new camera so I'm hoping this all focuses well and I can't see what I'm doing so fingers crossed this is good and I don't have to re-record this episode but here is what I have so far I am almost done the increases on the body and this is being knit out of, this is Woolen Lights, this is my hand dyed yarn in the 100% Superwash Merino DK Base in the Guava colorway. Um, so I figured this was a nice summer color and I'm hoping the 
pattern picks up. It has this nice lace sleeve. So I figured this was a nice summer transition into fall sweater. So almost done, like I said, the decreases on the body. And I am, <laughs> I have to attach another, um, another cake of yarn. Here's, here is that. So I'm hoping I'm going to give it a try on, make sure the length is good. It is a drop sleeve pattern, so at least it's top down. And I'll be able to try it on and get a good idea on if I want to add a little bit more length to the body. So I've done a lot of crop sweaters lately. However, I find I don't wear the crop sweaters as much. I'm just not comfortable in them. I think if I wore dresses um, to throw it over a dress, it would be really, really cute. Um, however, I don't wear... A lot of dresses so finding a shirt to wear underneath it just to make sure I'm all <laughs> covered up um, has been a challenge so that's the sweater I'm working on right now and then I want to share so this is I have a couple of socks in here so this is one of my bags and I am putting in about five of these into the shop on Friday with different patterns um, I have one of these in there right now with the Monster Relief, um, but that'll be going up. So that's in one of my bags, and I have two vanilla socks I am uh, working on. So the first vanilla sock I am knitting a sh sh shop sample. Oh, I cannot speak anything with S's right now. Um... And this is my flowering meadow color, and this is on my Merino Yak Nylon base. And here it is knit up. So this has been, I'm almost done and ready to start putting the toe, decreases for the toe. Um, but this has been my office knitting. In the office, I mean the TV show, not work. Um, we have been binge watching with um, the boys every night, the office. So my husband and kids like to sit in the dark. I like things as bright as possible. I think my eyes is <laughs> going. So the brighter, the better. And there goes that. Uh, so anyways, I, when we watch The Office, I just knit on a vanilla sock, so, um, this has been what I have been working on. Now, I did start another vanilla sock on the 4th of July weekend, because, <laughs> does anyone do crazy things like this? I'm gonna explain myself. So, I, we went to Ikea the 4th of July and it's about an hour car ride <laughs> however I was close to the toe on this vanilla sock so I didn't want to take this with me and have to measure and do start doing the decreases so I decided I'm just gonna cast on another vanilla sock because why not so I needed a fine yarn that I didn't have to cake up, so I pulled out, I have the Knit Picks Felici, and this is in the Toucan colorway. So here is what I have so far, and this has become then the office knitting because again, I need to just get the toe decreases on this done, and then I can start on the second sock. Um, now that my morning coffee socks are done, maybe I'll get this one done and the next one cast on so I can start knitting the second one during the office. But <laughs> anyways, this is what I've been working on now as far as vanilla knitting. And I do I love this bright orangey yellow color. 
So that is all I've been working on for the past um, week. So that is it for my knitting. I did want to kind of talk about some of the things I'm looking forward to casting on. And um, so now that my morning coffee socks are done, I've decided I'm just going to knit coffee related pad sock patterns to knit when I do do my morning coffee. So I want to cast on, I purchased Tracy Miller's um, from the Grocery Girls, her uh, coffee talk pattern. Um, so I had pulled out, I'm going to cake this up. This is Woolen Vines uh, Freyer. I don't know if I'm saying that name correctly. Um, that's the colorway on her footsie, which is the blue face Lester nylon base of her. So I'm going to cake that up and make this the coffee talk socks and work on those in the morning now. All right. So I just want to talk about some of the quilting I've been doing. So I've recently picked quilting back up. I had stopped for a while. I realized I do not like hand quilting. Um, my projects. I, I hate it. I don't know if thanks to my 40s my eyesight's bad and I just I have problems seeing when I'm hand quilting and that makes it difficult but I don't enjoy it and I had a friend at one point who's also a quilter tell me that if you don't hand stitch a quilt then is it's not really quilting like machine quilting doesn't really count which is completely silly because um of course it counts there's no rules there's no rules in quilting it's like there's no crying baseball there's no rules in quilting um so i decided i'm gonna start quilting again and i'm going to be machine quilting all of my projects and you know what for very large projects there are some amazing long arm quilters that I can go ahead and send it out to and have them do something special with my quilts. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. So um, I picked up quilting again and I decided I was going to start easy. So I am um, started quilting a couple paper piecing patterns just to ease my way into it and for anyone who doesn't know and I can't really because the patterns I have are all paid for but I can't so I don't want to show you what the paper piecing looks like but it's kind of like quilt by numbers which is great so the first pattern I did was I found this on Etsy this is fresh pineapples by the Quilty Pie Handmade super simple so I decided I just wanted to make a um, tabletop with it so I did three little pineapples and I just did I think it's a one and a half inch uh, uh, sashing around each pineapple and I'm hoping the camera can pick it up so I did hand quilt it and I did little diamonds in the pineapples and then I just kind of went around and stitched in the ditch around the tops of them. Uh, the one thing I found out when I started doing the diamonds that the um, the pineapples were not necessarily um, symmetrical. So I have the corners, I'm going to fold this in half here right here that looked a little bit wonky but that's okay it's a table topper it's going to just go I think on my island for the time being for the summer and I'm very pleased with the way it came out it was such a fun quick project um something easy to ease my way back into it I've never machine quilted anything before so it was one it was fun I enjoyed I enjoyed the machine quilting um, I'd like to get a free motion foot for my machine and give that a try. Um, oh, the drama with my sewing machine. Let me look at, I need my caffeine now to get through this story. So I had a $80 Kenmore sewing machine I picked up at Sears 
back in 1999 which to me doesn't seem that long ago however it's 21 years ago so the machine was it served me well however I started sewing on um, the bucket bag that my sweater is in and it's thick it's heavy canvas it's a really solid interfacing in my machine jammed you think this was alcohol in it to get it through this machine jammed needle was down in the middle of the project I was almost on the bag I had to take the machine completely apart I was able to get the project out without any damage thank God because I think I would have been in tears <laughs> Had I not been able to salvage I mean it's a big bag there's a lot of material and interfacing and everything and it was a lot of work to have to lose there's sewing curves in that bucket which I had never done before put the machine back together it just was not working so it, it it died. I almost just said something else, but I realize I try not to swear on this podcast. But it died. It's gone. It served me well for 21 years. So I was lucky enough that my aunt had given me this machine here behind me. It's Taylor Professional is the brand. She had bought it. It, it sews through leather, leather like butter. It is a great machine but honestly I've had it for years the threading process is four pages in the manual whereas my Kenmore it was like three little things and the machine was threaded so I was so intimidated by this machine however I had to drag it out we don't have the money to replace my sewing machine especially for the one that I really want um, so anyways, this is my sewing machine that I'm using. I do love it. It is, like I said, it's Taylor Professional. It's meant for um, home ex uh, classes and schools. It's solid. Hopefully this will last me quite a while. Fingers crossed. So with that being said, with the hand quilting, um, it's great. I have a walking foot I use. However, because it's such... A machine that's meant for a thicker heavy duty or materials I don't need a walking foot to quilt through um, to uh, do my machine quilting which is great but backtracking because I'm just going off topic now um, the f um, not the feet but the I don't know what it's called um, the part of the foot that helps feed the material through, someone can correct me down in the comments because it'll come to me after I'm done that. But anyways, the little, is it a feeder? It could be. Um, you can't drop those and you need that for free motion on a machine. I think you can put some cardboard down, but then I'm not quite sure how to get the bobbin thread up. So I have to do a little research into that, but I would like to get some free motion feet to start learning how to do stippling and everything else. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted on that and everything just fell off. I'm sitting on the piano bench with everything next to me because <laughs> I thought it would be easier than sitting in my chair. But now everything I had piled up on the piano bench just fell. So it's still early in the morning. So anyways, I finished my pineapple quill. I'm just going to bend over and uh, pick up this mess. All right. So then this. So the next thing I have been working on for quilting is this little pillow here. And this is, it's a paper piecing pattern. It's the Lone Starburst uh, by Six White Horse Patterns. It is a free pattern. I found it on Pinterest. Um, super easy. So I had gotten these. A lot of this material I'm getting from my mother, so I don't know 
they're just leftover pieces so I'm not a hundred percent sure who the designer is what brand they are so I apologize I can't give you any of that information um, but anyways this is just gonna be a little pillow for my chair my sewing chair and I did do machine quilting and I kind of just did quarter inch following the star pattern not perfect but again I just started machine quilting so I'm kind of pleased with the way this looks and came out so I do have to just finish sewing up the bottom of this however I do not have any hot pink thread I, so I need to see if my mom has any so I can sew this up and it'll kind of blend if not, I'll have to order some. So I'm just waiting for the thread on this to finish this up. But I'm, again, I'm pleased. I'm pleased with the way the machine quilting came out on that. So those are the two projects that, for quilting that I have worked on the past week. I do have um, a project I want to start um, cutting the material out for this weekend so I wanted to share that with you so um, I'll share the pattern first so this is the homespun pattern by modernly Morgan and I love this I realized to a lot of my quilting I was doing in kind of that country dark styles and I realized I've kind of evolved since then and I am loving white with the bright pops of color so I purchased and I've been out of the quilting um realm for so long I had no idea who Tula Pink was the bearded pearl podcast was just talking about it and how much he and his husband loved it and I'm like I can't believe I've been missing out on all of this. Anyways, though, I bought a couple fat quarter packets of Tula Pink's material, and I have just some white Kona um, material from Robert Kaufman that I'll do for the background, and I have more. So, rookie mistake, I let the battery die in my camera, and unfortunately, the tree trimmers are, the, um, are here to take down the trees, so... There's unfortunately, I'm looking out the window, there's unfortunately a lot of background noise, so I'm hoping to make it through this with not too much, and maybe I can edit some of that noise out. Um, however, I think I left off talking about the homespun pattern and that the Kona White with my Tula Pink fabric um, is going to be for the homespun uh, quilt. So I'm going to start cutting these up this weekend and get working on the top. I do have more of the Kona White coming in because I don't have enough there. So I have that. I did order one more th um, set. I shouldn't say that. I didn't order just one more set. I have a jelly roll coming of Tula Pink's uh, hand handmade series but then I also ordered this pack as well and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it there are 10 fat quarters in here so if anybody has any recommendations I would highly appreciate it but I don't know how well you can see that fanned out but here are the fabrics that came in this pack and they are beautiful again I want to do something with a pop of white with these just because I love that the stark contrast between the bright colors and the whites when it comes to my um, to the quilting patterns and I also picked up a couple other um, quilting patterns I wanted to share so while I've been watching all the podcasts every morning while knitting I discovered a YouTube channel by Erica Ardent, Ardent, I think that's how you say the name, but I'm not 100% sure, but she had a couple, she has over 100,000 followers. I don't know where I've been, again, under a rock somewhere, but she had a couple patterns and I absolutely fell in love with them. So 
I pick them up. So the first one here is the Vintage Fall quilt. And then the second one is the Vintage Summer quilt. I just think they're adorable. The little trucks. The summer one has little um, surfboards in the back. And we've got pumpkins for the fall. They won't be done this year, but I'm hoping to get them done for next year. They lap quilt sizes there. The summer one's 71 by 77, which actually can be a bed size. And the fall one is 66 by 68. So decent size to curl up on the couch with. And I know the summer you're probably all like, what is she going to do with a summer quilt? My husband likes to have the AC on. And I do not like it blowing on me. The cold air blowing on me makes me really, really cold. Um, I'm strange like that. However, um, so I don't mind an evening while watching TV in the summertime. I do curl up under a blanket or a quilt. Um, call me crazy. I don't know. So that is it for the quilting part of um, the podcast and then lastly I just kind of want to talk about I just want to move this stuff back here just wanted to talk about some of the things I keep looking because they keep dragging by <laughs> branches so I'm catching it the corner of my eyes I know what's there I don't know why I have to keep looking but I do anyways I just wanted to share some of the things that are going to be put into the shop. I'm putting some bags into the shop on Friday, so I just wanted to share what's going to be there Friday morning. And um, the majority of the bags are going to be this style. I don't have them finished yet. I'm going to be working on them this afternoon and tomorrow, but they're going to be this drawstring style. So I already have one of these still in the shop with the Monstera Leaf um, pattern. There'll be one more of the Monstera Relief one going in the shop on Friday, as well as a mini one. Um, these don't have the linings and they're not finished, but the, a mini one sock one that will be there as well. And then I have one more, this one already sold out, but I've got one more with the anchors that'll be in the shop on Friday, as well as a couple with, so the Monstera Leaves, and this pattern as well as this pattern are Rifle Paper Company and these are all canvas bags so I have a couple of these going into the shop as well and then I also have I'm leaning over and grabbing them a couple with little other handles that will be drawstrings as well so I have an anchor and then I have these two with black leather handles so that's what's going into the shop. I also, the wild, uh, sorry, flowering meadow. I still have two sock sets. I had sold out of them and I have two more I had just put in the shop. So I have two of these in the shop as well. And then the fire pit colorway um, sock set keeps selling out as well. But I think I have one more in the shop and I have plan on putting more in next week. The uh, Both the Flowering Meadow and the Fire Pit are both on my uh, Merino Yak Nylon uh, base. So I think I still have some Fire Pit in um, some merino nylon. I have some of the fire pit on some other different bases already in the shop if you want to check those out. Um, so that is it. I think I think I'm gonna leave it there. I think I did enough chit-chatting in between everything for the time being that you don't need me to keep <laughs> going on. Uh, it was a long transition back but I am hoping this will go smoothly. I'm hoping that I can get this edited and my computer doesn't give me a hard time. We'll see. You'll all see when it's posted. 
and that is it I hope you guys have a great week ahead stay safe stay healthy happy knitting and happy quilting and I'll see you later bye